Great Lakes Prepping here. If you're familiar with my weekly soup series, you may have seen my recent beer cheese soup video. For this soup, I decided that it would go amazingly well with a delicious homemade bread bowl, but not just any ordinary bread bowl. In my mind, nothing goes better with cheese soup than a soft pretzel. So what would be more perfect than a pretzel bowl? Now there's a few steps to go through and you have to follow them pretty closely for this to work. That being said, it's not especially difficult and I hope you give it a try. So let's get on with it. Let's look at our ingredients. From left to right we have dark brown sugar, all-purpose flour, baking soda, water, melted butter, an egg, and active dry yeast. Get started by mixing half cup of firmly packed brown sugar with one third cups melted butter, five and a half teaspoons yeast, and two cups of warm water. Make sure your water is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Too cold and the yeast won't activate. Too hot and it'll kill the yeast. Mix everything up very well and let it sit for a few minutes while the yeast proofs. After a few minutes, the yeast mixture should look a bit foamy. Add in five and a half cups of flour and mix with a fork until you have a dough that holds together by itself. Transfer the dough to a floured countertop and knead very thoroughly for between 5 and 10 minutes. The dough should be somewhat sticky, but not so much that it entirely sticks to the countertop or your fingers. After kneading, form the dough into a ball and place in a bowl. Cover the bowl with a slightly damp towel and put in a warm place. I usually put bread in the oven to proof. The oven shouldn't be turned on, but it works very well if the oven was on a while ago and it's still just slightly warm. Let the dough proof for one full hour. After this time, place the dough back on the counter. Divide the ball of dough into four equal sections. Now we have to take each section and form it into a tight ball. This is an important step for making bread bowls because dough wants to flatten out as it bakes but we want the dough to rise upward a bit and forming a tight ball helps with that. Pull the dough downward, trying to end up with a ball that is very smooth and taut all around. Do your best to sort of pinch and twist the dough underneath the ball to keep it nice and tight. This part takes a little practice and I'm still not anywhere near an expert at it. Place the four dough balls on lightly greased cookie sheets and leave on the counter undisturbed for 25 minutes. In the meantime, get about 10 cups of water boiling in a large pot. Once boiling, add three quarters of a cup of baking soda. Be sure to add the baking soda to your boiling water way too quickly so it will cause your pot to massively boil over and create an absolutely colossal mess. After haphazardly sopping up half of the mess and angrily deciding to finish cleaning up the rest later, bring the pot back up to boiling. Next, we have to very carefully boil each ball of dough. Using a big spoon or whatever else you can manage, set each ball of dough into the pot and boil for 30 seconds. Then turn the ball over and boil the other side for 30 seconds. Be sure to not really go any more or less than 30 seconds per side. As you remove each ball, set them on cookie sheets lined with parchment paper. Once all of the balls have been boiled, brush each of them with an egg wash. If you're not familiar with egg washes, just beat an egg with a tiny bit of water. Brush it over the top and sides of each ball of dough. Using an egg wash for baked goods gives it a nice shiny crust. Now cut small crisscrossed slits in the top of each ball with a very sharp knife. You don't need to go deep. These shallow slits help direct where the dough will split while baking so it doesn't split somewhere else and ruin the bread bowl. Sprinkle each ball with a bit of coarse salt if you like. And now it's time to bake. Place in an oven preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. You want a nice deep dark color, but you don't want burnt. Remove from the oven and allow to cool before cutting. When cool, use a small serrated bread knife to cut out the top of each ball. Cut it sort of like how you would the top of a pumpkin for a jack-o'-lantern. Next, use a knife and spoon to carefully hollow out the bread bowl. Be sure not to punch through the walls or the bottom or you'll have a big mess when you put soup in it. Just make sure to leave a nice thick wall all the way around. 
Obviously, you'll want to serve immediately after filling with soup, because that soup is going to soak through after a while. I'm filling mine with an amazing beer cheese soup, which, by the way, you can see how I made if you check out my recent beer cheese soup video. I am by no means an expert baker, and I've only made a few bread bowls in my life. Still, by following the directions closely, I'm able to end up with a good-looking and great-tasting pretzel bowl. A regular, non-pretzel bread bowl is another option, and they're a bit easier to make because you don't have to deal with the whole boiling step. If you liked this video, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all our latest videos, including lots of cooking and recipe videos. Thanks for watching and for your continued support, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.